Welcome to another video. Let's do one more of the floor function. I know that I've done several of them, but this one is slightly different from what we've done before because we just don't have x, we have 3 over x. So this is the first time I think that we're going to be doing some fractions and we're going to make things very easy for ourselves by getting rid of the fractions at first and then eventually coming back to see what the fraction was in the first place. So what I'm going to do is replace 3 over x with 3 times y. And that way I don't have to wonder how to deal with the fractions. This is a good, smart strategy. So let's get into the video. So let's rewrite what we have here. We know that this is going to be the floor of 3 multiplied by 1 over x minus this 1 over x and it's equal to 3. So we can say let y be equal to 1 over x so that the original problem becomes the floor of 3y minus the floor of y is equal to 3. And there's one more thing we can do. We can try to write 3y in terms of, well, usually that's a strategy you do, you use consistently, write one of the terms in terms of the other. So I would say 3y, which is the more complicated one, will be written in terms of the simpler one. So I can say that the floor of 3y is exactly equal to 3 plus the floor of y. So if we can get the floor of y, then we can get the floor of 3y, and maybe that will help us get our answer. Remember the relationship between the floor of a number and the number itself. We know that if k is equal to the floor of y, then k is less than or equal to y, and y is less than k plus 1. And remember that k is an integer, so let's just add that as a fact. Um, we say that k is an integer. Okay. We don't, have an, we don't have an equation for y itself. Everything is a floor. So what we could do is create two inequalities and then work with them. So right here, I have the floor of 3y is equal to 3 plus the floor of y, which, if this is the general relationship that I have with y and k, I can go here and say, okay, since I have decided that k is the floor of y, I can replace this with k, so that what I have is, I say, then, the floor of 3y is equal to 3 plus the floor of y, which I said we're going to now take to be k. And remember the definition of the floor of a function. If the floor of a function is an integer, which is an integer, we know it's always an integer, it is always less than the number. So we, from here we know that 3 plus k is less than or equal to 3y and 3y is less than 1 added to this which is going to be 4 plus k. So we have this inequality and we have this inequality. Well, let's try and make this also y so we can just have two nice things to work with. So if I put these two together, I can say that k is less than or equal to y, and it's less than k plus 1. I'm rewriting this, and I'm going to write this so that y is going to be in the middle. Okay, so if I divide everything by 3, I'm going to have 3 plus k over 3, and here I'm going to have 4 plus k over 3. So how do we use this? We don't know which one is bigger of this, okay? For example, if I tell you 1 is if I tell you 0 is less than, let's say, 
zero is less than y, and I also tell you that x is less than y, well, there is no guarantee that x is zero. x could be any number that's less than y, so you can't really relate them. But if I tell you y is less than 2 and x is less than y, like this, k is less than y, but y is less than this guy, I can connect these two and be sure that I'm right. So if I connect these two, I know that k is less than 4 plus k over 3. That is certain. If I solve for k here, I'm going to have 3k is less than 4 plus k, which means if I move k here, I have 2k is less than 4, and that means so we have 2k is less than 4, and that means that k is less than 2. So the integer we're looking for is less than 2. That's something we're sure of. Now let's go to the next thing we need to know. So because I used these two, I can use these two also. That's a general strategy that I would recommend. Okay, unless you have your own way of doing it, but this way always works, never fails, as far as I know. Okay, so we we'll co connect these two. We say that 3 plus k divided by 3 is less than k plus 2 k plus 2. So if we solve for k here, we have 3 plus k is less than 3k plus... Where did I get k plus 2? k plus 1? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> what was I thinking? Okay, 3k plus 3. Okay, now, move the 3 here. You're going to have 3 minus 3 is less than 2k, 3k minus k. So you have 0 is less than 2k, which means 0 is less than k, which means k is greater than 0. So now we have found some gap. k is greater than 0 and k is less than 2. So we can combine these two and say that 0 is less than k and k is less than 2. And because k is an integer, the only integer that is greater than 0 and less than 2 is 1. So definitely we know that k is equal to 1. This implies k is equal to 1. And with this, we can just get our answer because we can go back here and plug in k. So let's write that. So since k equals 1, from this equation, we know that 1 is less than or equal to y and y. Is now we have the first one and then we're going to plug in the second one. We're going to plug in one into the second equation so we have a more restricted interval. So if we plug in one here, it's going to be 3 plus 1 over 3. That's 4 thirds. So we have 4 thirds is less than or equal to y and it's less than. If we plug in one here, it's going to be 5 thirds. Okay, 5 over 3. So what should we choose? Because this is addressing y. You don't want to pick the bigger space that, that's not going to satisfy this one. So if you look at it clearly, this is a closer interval. Imagine, let's go here. This one runs from 1 to 2. So you have your number line, and this inequality runs from 1 to 2. This is 2, okay? But this inequality runs from, so you notice that you have, for this one, you have to start from somewhere here and go all the way to somewhere here. And you don't go all the way to the end. So everything in here is in the second inequality. So y, if y satisfies this one, it satisfies this one. So this is the answer you want to pick and not the first one. Okay, so this clearly is the value of y that we're going to pick or the range of values of y we're going to pick because it is more restrictive and it satisfies this. Every single value of y here satisfies this. Now let's go find x. Remember that x is not y. It's the reciprocal of y. And that's where the final move comes in. Now remember that when you're dealing with inequalities, let me just show you something small here. Okay, make tiny boxes. Look, two is less than 3. 
But once you flip them into their reciprocals, and this becomes one half, it becomes greater. The sign shifts. It becomes greater than one third. That is a rule for all inequalities. Or you might as well move them here. Just bring this here and take this here and flip them. So I could have done one third is less than one half. Just change the positions and flip them, which is what I'm going to do here. Okay, so since y equals 1 over x, we can conclude, I'm going to put the answer here, hope you see it, that if you flip this side, 3 over 5, you keep the same kind of sign, is less than y, or no, less than x. And x, you flip this one, is going to become less than or equal to 3 over 4. Now, this is the solution. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.